Hey everybody, welcome back to my October bench update. The shorts and the flip-flops are being replaced with jeans and a hoodie. It's got a little cold here in central Virginia. Um, yeah, it's definitely turned um, full season now. So um, the sun's behind us and we're into prime modeling season where I definitely see it in my YouTube analytics too. As summer, we're busy doing stuff like riding motorcycles or out with family and stuff. And as soon as that dark nights come in and it gets a lot colder, suddenly my views and all the interactions go up and more people are at the bench modeling. So we're in modeling season, so which is great. So usual spiel, I'm going to run through the two builds I've done this month. I'm going to talk about some purchases and some free stuff I got. I'm talk about some Chinese um, sponsorships, I guess. Um, and people try to hassle me right now for more. Um, Airbrushes, I can go for a bit of an airbrush round um, as well with gallery, so stay tuned for that one. And um, yeah, we'll get right into it. So, starting off with my first finished build of the month, and that was the SU25 from Edward. It's the best of kit, and it's right there. So, it was actually a surprise of a kit. It was beautiful, went nice detail, went together no problems at all, no fit issues. It has potential for fit issues because it's very complex shape and it kind of goes together like a A6 intruder where you have all the kind of intake stuff going on and there's room for like misalignments and getting making mistakes. But that thing all went together, no problem at all. Tamiya fit quality and um, the only issue was a gear, which not necessarily the Vesta's issue, it's just the way the aircraft's shaped. Um, you have to put the gear in early because the, the lower, lower part, the panel, the, the fuselage gets put, put in. And all that means is it's a fragile gear and you're going to break it. And I broke it many times. So broke it because obviously you have to put it early. Then you're having to paint, decal, weather, prime, all that kind of stuff with this gangly gear coming off. Um, my mistake was first time I broke it off, I super glued it back on. And next day I broke it off again. So once it broke, I should have just left it, wait to the very end, just glued it back on. So instead of like keep trying to fix it. So anyway, we got through it, um, has a ton, ton of nose weight, I think um, two ounces in that one. Um, so it's very sturdy, no issues at all being a tail sitter. Um, great selection of ornaments in the kit. Um, yeah, really cool. So I use the Digi Camo. Um, I have the decals from Kagaru, I think they were called, which is really not, went down really well. And I use the Mars set from Aeromars, as I usually do. Now, did have some issues with the masks, as you see in the build series, and that was with, they had reacted with the attacker paint. So I used the attacker paint set, the lacquer paint set, and they have some kind of weird formula going on in those paints. They're not pure lacquers, they're a little bit of a hybrid, and they apparently react with the adhesive on the, um, on the masking sheets. So if you wait like a week between each paint color and mask it, according to Jim Aero Mask, you have no issues at all. But like me, if you're waiting a couple of hours, I mean, you put down and then spray, it kind of got left some really like tacky residue all over the aircraft. It wasn't a big deal. I just took it to the kitchen sink, goo gone, um, wiped off all the adhesive and just ran it under the sink, cleaned it um, with water and it was fine. It's just extra steps. But again, if, you have, if you're not in a rush um, and using attacker paints, just again, just spray it, wait a week, then mask it so it fully cures and you have no issues with the adhesive. But the adhesive just reacts with the paint um, for some reason. But anyway, we got through that. As you can see, it turned out pretty good in the end. And um, yeah, really happy with the schemes. So the boxing came with a bunch of like check markings. None of those really kind of spoke to me. I just really kind of wanted to do a digi camo and that Ukrainian one was a pretty cool scheme. So did that one. And then I thought to myself, I kind of want to do something different. I want to build an engine. So I looked at my aircraft, uh, maybe like 30 second scale aircraft, like where I can get in and build like some detailed engine. And in the end I picked out, went way, left field and picked out the Italeri one ninth scale bike. The one ninth, yeah, one ninth scale. And that was the uh, the Norton. Um, and it turned out really well. Something different. Again, I'll show you some pictures. It is, um, it, I said it got for a lot of lack of thinner because, you know, when painting those bikes, there's so many different colors, metallics. I'll just, you know, changing out colors and cleaning the airbrush so many times as you do with car and bikes. And um, really enjoyed it. It's a good size to work with. Um, the only issue was with really some, the fit, well, no fit issues. Uh, some people say these bikes are unbuildable. Just a little flash, take care of, dry fitting, old school modeling. Um, went together no problem at all. 
um, use plenty of different metallics to kind of create some different effects. And um, yeah, there we go. The only issue was the hoses. So it tells you how to cut, cut how long to cut each of the hoses. And they're always way too long. They give you way too much. So I always have to cut off like a centimeter or two on each one just to kind of get them to fit. Um, also, the, they're very thin um, and they're kind of like the attachment point where you put the hose over um, was too big. So often I had to just stick it to the end. Um, it wouldn't fit over. Um, the hose was the diameter was too narrow. Um, but that's some minor stuff. Um, also, as you can see, I painted my if you're a purist, you might get triggered. But the box and the scheme is silver tank. I painted mine white just because I want to do white. I just like the color better. And hey, it's my model. And also, I had a lot of silver on already from the wheel spokes, um, from the engine. There's a lot of silver on that bike. So I just want to break it up. So I went with the white, which I love. Just Tamiya LP gloss white. Um, I didn't like flat it back or anything like that. I just sprayed some LP9 lost clear over it and um yeah really turned out nice so i definitely want to build more bikes i'd want to build maybe the tallery the triumph not not sorry not the triumph the harley davidson um world war ii us like bike that looked pretty cool so that's one ninth scale it has like the holsters in it for the guns and that kind of stuff so i might try that one in the future but yeah really had that kit in the stash for a few years um and yeah highly recommend it if you like your motorcycles that one ninth scale is really good because you know mostly you know, bikes come in 112 scale, got some down here, which is okay, but the one knife is definitely a better size, or one sixth even um, for a motorcycle is a good size too. Um, so that's my two finished builds. So got a Sukhoi 25 and a bike. Um, haven't started anything yet, it's been a few days, and I'm looking for my stash, trying to figure out what to build. Might build a tornado, maybe that desert babe. I'm not, yeah, I'm not decided yet, so I gotta figure that out in the next few days. Um, on top of that, usual part works, really coming along with the flat Falcon. I'm not going to pick it up, um, but you've seen the latest video. Um, almost finished the frame on the underside now. We're 61 out of 100 parts through, so we'll get well on the way with the Falcon. And the Batmobile is over there um, under a under a cloth and get dusty. The Batmobile's massive, um, 66 Batmobile. We're about, I think we're what, about mid, we're about maybe a third of the way through that one, a quarter of the way through. It's 110 parts, and I think it's like part 30-ish on that one. Um, but yeah, I've done a lot of framework. Um, now we're getting towards the stage where we're building out, maybe some body work coming up soon. So that's getting exciting as well, but Batmobile's going to be cool. So the 66 Batmobile, definitely the best Batmobile out there. Um, so that's what I've got going on. Um, and I can also continue you know, every month, each part of the two part works, pointing it down here. So I've got the Falcon and the Batmobile. And um, like I said, I'm gonna start a new plastic model kit um, this weekend. I just gotta figure out which, why I wanna do um, aircraft wise, or maybe even do a Warbird. I don't know yet, I gotta figure it out and pick game time decisions. So that's kind of what I got going on. Um, let's talk a little bit about product sponsorships and promotions. Like I don't know if it's cause I hit 10,000 subscribers or what it is, but every day in my inbox, I get emails from people in China trying to trying to endorse products and mean to sponsor it my channel and a lot of it most 99% of it's no because it doesn't relate to modeling like I had one well one 3d printing which was kind of loosely related but they want to do a bunch of work and stuff and barely I think for like a hundred dollars they want me to do all this work and it's like yeah it's not worth my time but I think basically what it what it was basically they do like a 3d printing service and they wanted me basically make a model and the example they showed me was like a guy who maybe built like a truck or something or a car and then they free printed wheels for it, which went on the truck, um, that kind of thing. So I, that was a no for me. Um, get random ones too, like perfume, like women's perfume, like from China. Like, why am I going to put that on my modeling channel? Like, seriously. So stuff like that. Um, I obviously did Timu. Um, they gave me a couple of kits, which we'll see in a minute. Um, I got 40,000 views on that, shit, that video in like a week. Um, so that was a pretty good one for me. Um, you know, politics aside in terms of sponsorship for the channel and you know revenue and stuff that was a pretty good one um but i don't want to spam it now did that one video and a team who came back to me and like oh that video did good good now would you want to do a set of free videos for us um each video will give you a hundred dollars um of credit for each one we can buy stuff and do a video and um i was like no <laughs> so, so i'm not gonna spam my channel with timu i did one video that's enough uh, we can move on with more modeling content but just heads up, you know, if it, they haven't reached out to me, they're reaching out to other people. So if you see other people on YouTube, other content creators suddenly doing free videos for Timu, you know what it is. Um, they come in waves, campaigns. Um, 
I'm not going to like sell myself out for that kind of stuff. You know, for a hundred bucks worth of modeling stuff, it's not worth my time or effort. I, I mean, you, odd one here and there, just to pad out some content, sure. But I'm not going to spam it with one provider. Now, AliExpress reached out to me, surprise, surprise. They must have saw a Timu video and like, same thing. Oh, we can give a hundred dollars of store credit and you can do a video for us. And I was like, no, I just did one for Timu. I'm not going to do AliExpress. Maybe in a few months time, if I'm slow, maybe do a quick AliExpress video. But the problem with AliExpress is, I used to buy a lot of stuff from them, um, not just modeling, but other stuff. Um, and the models in particular used to be super cheap because you're buying directly from China. COVID hit and whatever reason, postal changes happened. And we went from, you know, last couple of years, AliExpress from getting kits shipped for you free of charge or maybe like two or three, five dollars. Now it's like $65 in shipping for a kit. If you go on AliExpress and put in like Mang or um, Border Models or the usual kind of ones, they want like 60, $65 per kit, um, depending on the seller. To ship it to the US. It's like, why would I even do that? Because that's just ridiculously priced. Your kit might be low, but then I'm paying $20, $30 more than I can buy from my local retailer or a local online place in the US. So it's pointless. Um, the good thing about Timu, however, is their shipping is still free. Um, the search engine can be a little bit crappy. Um, that selection isn't much, but you're buying directly from China. And if you're buying, you know, border models or Meng, it's not a rip off or a fake you're buying it's the exact same product you're just cutting a middleman out and buying it straight from china saving cash um, but valley express again I'm paying 60 bucks for a model kit shipping it's just not effective unless it's something really rare you can't find anywhere else um so that's where we're at with that and then gallery reached out to me and you know how i feel about gallery airbrushes i've done a few of them in the past and i've always given the way it's free i've done a quick like simple review and send them away um to subscribers the dumb drawers given them away for free of charge i've never kept any maybe i have one um, I've used for like now and again, but generally they've all gone away. Um, they reached out to me again. We've got a promotion coming up on Amazon. Would you like to do another airbrush? And I'm like, responded like, as I'm a straight shooter, same as always. Sure, send it to me. I'll look at it. I'll give an honest opinion. And I think my gallery reviews in the past have been very honest in terms of I've talked pretty negative about them. And to be honest with you, considering they sent me free products. Um, one thing you should look out for again, you know, my videos, I'm always honest. I don't like endorse or sponsor something that's crap or I don't believe in. And, um, you know, I see other videos, other content creators, again, no names, but you know, they're jumping on the bandwagon, um, these products and, um, they're not doing the full research and maybe not giving the full opinion because they're getting it for free. Whereas I tell them up front, Hey, I'm going to tell you if it's crap or not. Now my problem with gallery is the airbrushes are, are Chinese airbrushes and at a premium price point and I can just buy better for cheaper um, for half the price, if not more. So why would I buy? I mean, maybe there's a few enhancements. Um, so I'm actually going to do a video about this soon. I think um, where I'm going to recommend my airbrushes you should buy. And I'll tell you, give it a quick 60 seconds right now. And that's if you want a budget airbrush, cheap budget airbrush, just buy the Fenger 180. Um, Amazon.co.uk is about 21 pounds, British pounds. If, you, if you're in the US, you can't buy it on Amazon.com. Just go to Amazon.co.uk. You can buy from international Amazon sites and just have it shipped to the US for a reasonable price. Um, I think the shipping was like 10 euros or something. So even even then, um, I got my finger airbrush for like 35 bucks. Still cheap from Amazon.co.uk. Um, people don't know this. So if, again, if you want, say, go to Amazon.co.de for Germany or Amazon.co.australia, whatever that one is, you can buy from these other Amazon websites, just sign in, just, you pay international shipping and they just ship it. Um, so don't, you don't always go to your local country if you can't find it. Um, Fenga used to have an a AliExpress store. I don't think it's there anymore. Um, maybe Timu might have, you can look around in China, Chinese websites too, buy direct, but cheap airbrush. Um, and this is just for me, if you go to Flory Models, they've been rant ranting on this one for a year or two now. The um, That Fenga for 20 pounds, 30 bucks is the best airbrush on the budget. Premium airbrushes, my go-to for the last eight years now has been a Procon Boy, Mr. Hobby Procon Boy. It's any point free needle. The point two for me um, is a little bit too too small. I like point three because I can be more forgiving with my paint mixtures. Um, whether you buy the platinum or the regular double action one, um, I can't remember the numbers, 289 and whatever the other one is. Spraygunner.com in the US, great prices, about $80, $85 shipped. Um, they get them in a couple of days. That is the best premium airbrush for the price. Now, Iwata, great airbrushes. If you get them on a good price, sure. I, all of them are great other than the Neo because the Neo is actually a Sparmax. But any of the other range of the um, Iwata airbrushes are great. But here's the deal. 
the Procon Boy is made in the same factory, the same parts, the same quality, and it's cheaper price. So in that point, point of view, rather than me going out spending $150, $160 on Iwata, I'll spend $80 on a Procon Boy, and it's the same thing. Um, just stamped, different name, white label on the side, different, but it's the same airbrush, same factory, um, same components, same quality of components. Now, slightly different because Iwata is 0.35, whereas your um, Mr. Hobby is going to be 0.2 or 0.3 needle. Um, but some of the other parts are, are interchangeable with the two. So that's my go-to. Um, Harlan Steenbeck, beautiful airbrushes to look at. Um, I've had the Infinity before. I spent $260, $280 on that one. It went. To, I sold it a few months later. Um, if you're spraying inks or just lacquer paints, great. But any kind of acrylic paint in there, any kind of thicker paints, the thing just kept clogging. It kept um, spitting spot, um, spitting. Um, it just wasn't good, a good experience. So I went from that to the Pro Convoy and it just seamlessly sprays every single time. So that's my opinion. Um, airbrush is like buying a car, right? People have their own brands they like and their own opinions. My personal opinion, I just shared with you, that's what I'll go with every single day. I don't want to deal with like stoppages and spitting and deal airbrush issues. I just want to just pick up my airbrush and just spray um, without issues every time. And I think, you know, my work speaks for itself. It's surrounded by me on YouTube. I have 600 videos. You can see exact close-ups videos, what I spray, what I do, my quality of my work. You know, I don't, I'm, with paint, I don't, I do pretty thick mixtures and sometimes I don't really care. I just do it quickly. I don't spend much time and just spray. And you can see, you know, everything turns out to an okay standard using those airbrushes. So that's what I recommend. So again, my fellow content creators, you'll see that there'll be a flood of gallery airbrushes coming on YouTube um, if I'm already next couple of weeks. And I'll be interested to see who did their research and um, who talks about the alternatives and um, yeah, who's um, on the bandwagon with that one too. Because there's definitely other products out there as well. So be careful um, with YouTube and it's a minefield. Now, not just obviously model products, um, but you know, things like motorcycles. I recently bought another motorcycle and um, you know, you have to be very careful about the product reviews and who's doing it because if they've got been paid or given the motorcycle, they can give a pretty good review, right? Not, you have to pick and choose who you follow so just again be careful with your contents but i'm again i think i'm pretty honest um whatever i have anything given to me or shown i always state it on the video and always give my truthful opinion um whether that's good or bad um but there we go so that's my little kind of rant over with i guess um oh another thing is if if i do a video like timu video where it's a chinese product if this is a modeling channel so don't come at me in the comments about politics because you just can get banned um or that's pretty much because um, we're talking about modeling. We try to escape from the real world in this channel. This is, we're not about local, we're not about politics. This is about making models, escaping from the real world, having fun, building stuff. We're not talking about the Chinese government. And um, also it's a bit of, a little bit of a double standard because guess what? You're complaining about buying a Meng or a um, border model kit from Timu in China, but the same person's buying the kit from Scale Hobbyist, B&M model, Hannant's, um, all these other sites, I can, I can rattle off 10, 15 sites, you're still paying and buying that product from China. There's still, money's still going back to China. Same with the Vesta products. Um, you're buying, you're still buying the product. It's where whoever you buy it from, the money's still going back to the same pot. So again, don't get political about it, but fair warning, I've warned any political comments or any kind of nonsense in the comments, you just can get banned from the channel. I have, you know, I have zero tolerance. I have a BS to be honest with you. And you know that. So there we go. So, all right, on to purchases. So, first one, well, let's talk about a couple of things here. So, I did order the F35C and B, because I don't have the B, I have the A. Where is it? Oh, it's up there now, um, off the camera. So, I built the A, did a video build, video build on the channel, um, the Tamiya 48 scale we're talking about. So, the new C is coming out in about a month. So I've got that coming straight from the distributor. Also got the B I ordered as well. So we'll do a nice comparison. Suppose the C, they've redone the, the fuselage, the round panels. It can't, well, I, how I read it is it's more finer. So I'll be interested to take that out, take out the box on A and compare the two fuselages and see exactly if there is any difference. So that, that's coming up um, so soon. So watch out for that one. And um, back to the purchases, a couple of things. A couple of Quinta Studio sets. I bought the... Um, for the alligator helicopter, I bought the set right there, the Quinta Studios. Again, I'm all about Quinta Studios. They're just awesome. And this is pretty cheap. This is for a um, MRAP. 
the dashboard. And um, you see, it's pretty nicely detailed. This is less than 10 bucks. And I did this because the reason I was talking about the F35s is that same order I put in, um, I ordered the, I can't remember the brand now, it might be Kinetic um, MRAP. But they did, um, I know I'm gonna, I mentioned I'm not going to armor again, but this one was the a police department one, like a SWAT team. Um, I think it was Kinetic. Um, and it was reasonably priced, and I thought, that's really different. And they had some really cool schemes, like different police departments. Um, and I thought, I could be cool for a diorama too, 35th scale. So I ordered one of those. So basically this guy in the, in like the navy blue police kind of colors, I think it had white door, the scheme I was liking. So I bought this too to go with it. Um, so I bought this, and I thought, you know, I might as well just add this as well. So that's the um, MRAP. And if I did remember, I'll put a picture up of the, um, the police one I'm talking about. So got this guy. Um, got a Herc, got the J and the shorter J. The J before was really long. This is more of a shorter, stubbier one. Um, again, did a little unboxing video on the channel recently on this one. It looks a really nice kit. A um, little bit devoid of service detail. You got your power lines. Um, I need to check the reference materials, but I'm assuming there's rivets on this. Um, so just needs a riveting, which isn't much, you know, an hour or two's work with a riveter. Um, Need a, need a mask set because there's no way I'm masking all these up in semi-second scale. And like I mentioned before, it might be cool to do like it, you know, they've got the ramp down being semi-second scale. I mean, somebody mentioned like you can buy like Bushmasters or various like little armor to go in the back, like light armor, or I think maybe pallets full of freight. Um, you can probably 3D print too, um, create some detail inside it. Um, so yeah, that's the hook. And um, definitely need to get a mask set for that one. So excited to do that one. And I also got the scheme Check, I don't have it with me right now, but check the video. Um, I got the scheme, the British um, RAF version, 50th anniversary, had like a blue tail with the with the um, Union Jack flag on. Um, next up were the ones I got from Timu. Um, I got the Spitfire, Border Models. I want to build this one. The problem is the decals. The decals are crap. Um, you get one scheme, which isn't great. Oh. And well, it's, it's buried at the bottom there, but the decals are misprinted. You got the round one has a black black circle on it um, line, which doesn't exist. Which initially I thought, oh shit, this is unbuildable because you can't get aftermarket decals for this at a reasonable price. Now there's one company on like fancy print shop charges like 40, 50 bucks for a set, which I'm not paying that. Um, so hopefully like Hannant's are gonna bring, you know, extra decal, whatever their brand, they're gonna bring out something in 35th scale. But being, 30, being 35th, there's no aftermarket for it. So. I initially, I initially thought it was unbuildable because of the decals, but then I realized, well, if it's just the round doors, I got the circle, the spade circle machine, I could just create templates and just spray the round doors. So I don't know why I didn't think of that to start with. So might build at some point. Um, it looks really nicely detailed. Again, I think I might get the Quinta Studio set just because you get the seat belts on the rest of it. Now the 35th scale is very noticeable to the 32nd scale. Um, it's a lot smaller. Like you think it's similar size, but when you put them next to each other, it's significantly smaller but a good size um do want to build this one so like i said i might just wait a little bit longer see if any decals come out any different schemes if not i can just easily like mask and paint the roundels um and like i said i just want to get the wait well, i don't think there's a mask set in this one either I'll check real quick no there's a little bit of photo etch but there's no um mask canopy mask either which is a little bit of a disappointment um I was hoping it was a mask included as well. But yeah, that's the Border Model Spitfire. The plastic looks beautiful. Um, all these 35th scale kits from Border Models look great. Um, just the structures that have color callouts and um, the decal was a disappointment on that one. And the other one I got from Timu. That was limited selection, but this one just being men caught my eye. And this was the Wild Weasel. Beautiful kit. Um, this one does have a mask set included. And I'm not a big Phantom guy though, so. I, I, yeah, I'm just not big on phantoms to be honest with you. So I'm, I'm not sure if and when I ever get around to building this. Um, but if you do like your phantoms, this kit is um, is beautiful. As you expect, all main main kits are great. Um, you know, the details great. But the main thing is, excuse the rustling. More like that main the instructions, like very bad page to pick nice and easy to follow color call outs and just beautiful the instructions do make for a good building experience i think just some nice schemes and yeah 
great kit. Again, he's, I'm just not a big, big guy on handsomes. It just you know kills the mojo a little bit for me. Um, yeah, do a subject I enjoy building, I guess. But who knows? Yeah, I do like the wild weasel, so I might build this one at some point. But again, this one's going in the stash. A big, thick box full of plastic. And um, again, I do recommend this one. Uh, where are we at? Um, oh, and my other purchase is my Spark Pillin 401, which is absolutely beautiful motorcycle. Um, just picked it up a few weeks ago and can't get enough of it. It's If you're looking for an Urban Explorer motorcycle, 400cc, a little bit under, awesome bike. Um, I just love the look of it. I think it's a sexy looking bike. It's it's very interesting. It's not classic. It's not. It's kind of a modern futuristic classic. It's hard to explain it. It's just interesting look to look at, I think. And very rare, definitely a head turner at least as well. So um, yeah, I've been putting a few mods on that bike and um, now we're getting cold and you get the heater grips put on it too, which reminds me, I've got to call a dealer about the heater grips. But um, yeah, on my other channel, Ride and Wander, I did put my Harjan Loop video up recently too. Um, my It's like an hour long. I, I got all my two days worth of <laughs> GoPro footage and managed to sit down over the weekend and put it into one hour video um, of me driving the Harjan Loop. Um, I, oh, that segue again, public service announcement on that, those videos for sure. And some of my videos on this channel, somehow I'm up, like, uploading them at 1080, but YouTube's putting them at like 360p to save bandwidth. Um, so look crap. So if, if you see any unboxing videos and you can't see any like power lines or rivets and stuff, check the cog, um, and settings, you might be at 360, not 1080p. Um, and um, annoyingly too, is I've noticed on those, those ride videos, the GoPro ones, you know, with 10, 360, it looks crap. For 1080, it's clear, um, but it doesn't save the settings. So if I change it 1080, and then two days later, I check the video again, it's watching 360 again. So the, if you click on like the information about it, it especially on the cell phone, it says, oh, to, to help with bandwidth and cell phone coverage and all blah, 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 we've downgraded the 360. I think they're just trying to save, um, YouTube's free, obviously, right? We follow their rules. I think we're just trying to save on, um, they're trying to save some bandwidth. So these videos, you know, they're putting at lower resolutions for some reason. I don't know why. So again, if you watch these videos and it seems really blurry and shitty quality, now trust me, like on my computer, it's crystal clear. So just check, again, check the little cog in the bottom and make sure you're on 1080. Um, I don't do 4K because it's way too much in terms of like space. You know, take up hard drives worth of stuff compared to 1080. And for YouTube and what we do, 1080 is more than adequate. Um, I'm not doing feature length movies here. I'm just doing modeling videos. So 1080, you know, is, is more than enough, but 4K is just, yeah. Although looks good, it's just way too much space takes up um, when you're doing videos every week on YouTube. Um, what else? That's pretty much it. So again, um, Patreon, I'm um, a quick shout out. We're on, I think, up to part three now of my F14B build, the Tamiya kit. Once that's done, that goes up every Wednesday. I'll put up the SU-25. Um, thank you guys for supporting me. And um, I'm going to start a new model. Not sure yet, but next month I'll tell you what I'm working on and catch you then. So yeah, have a good month and I'll see you next time. Bye.